Once, a 23-year-old New Mexico man, Perry, was facing a murder charge after fatally beating his friend Chris with an electric guitar and a microwave. Why did he do it? Because his friend Chris has been binge-watching The Walking Dead on Netflix and allegedly became a zombie and tried to bite Perry. Perry was also highly intoxicated at that time. The police concluded that the root cause of this incident was binge watching and binge drinking. In both cases, it was their uncontrolled mind that caused their downfall. We all decide to do something important, but for some reason, we always just get sidetracked by other petty engagements. Our addictions, bad habits, lack of determination, lack of focus, negativity, envy, greed, lust, anger, inability to control our words, all of these is because of our uncontrolled mind. The scriptures compare the human body to a chariot, the senses to the horses driving the chariot, the mind is compared to the reins and the intelligence to the driver who maneuvers the chariot. The passenger of the chariot is compared with the spirit soul, the real occupant of the body. Ideally, the passenger is supposed to direct the driver and the driver is supposed to control the reins and the reins are supposed to control the senses. What happens when the horses run wild and the reins are not properly handled? The whole chariot is destined to go haywire and the passenger or the soul suffers. Srimad Bhagavatam therefore says, One who thinks that he has many enemies is an ignorant man. A person in knowledge knows that there are no enemies but those within oneself, the uncontrolled mind and senses. On the other hand, a controlled mind is the best friend of the living entity. There used to be an exalted Vaishnava saint called Haridas Thakur. Once, an envious man conspired to spoil the reputation of Haridas Thakur and hired an attractive prostitute to woo him in the middle of the night. But in spite of extreme temptations, Haridas Thakur restrained his senses with a controlled mind focused on Krishna and even transformed her heart and the prostitute eventually became a devotee of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, for him who has conquered the mind, the mind is the best of the friends. But for one who has failed to do so, his mind will remain the greatest enemy. But Arjuna admitted that, O Krishna, the mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate and very strong. And to subdue it, it seems to me more difficult than controlling the wind. The most qualified Arjuna himself certified that to control the turbulent mind is even more difficult than capturing the wind. Then what is the easiest process? Once upon a time, a man got a magic bottle as a boon from a sage. It has a wish-fulfilling genie inside it. When invoked, the genie comes out of the bottle and tells the master, I will do whatever you tell me, but you must keep me busy. And as soon as I don't have anything to do, I will kill you. The master says, Okay, you can begin by cleaning the kitchen. The genie cleans the kitchen and comes back. Alright, clean the living room. Okay, clean the bedroom. Clean the hallway. Clean the basement. Clean the attic. Pretty soon the whole house is completely clean. Now the master is running out of ideas and begins to panic. Because if he does not keep the genie busy, the genie is going to turn on him and kill him. Suddenly he gets an idea. He keeps a ladder against a wall and asks the genie to go up and down on that ladder continuously and tells the genie to be engaged like this until he calls him again. The genie is happily put to work and the man becomes relieved. Now in this story, the genie represents our mind. If we don't keep the mind engaged, the mind will turn on us and murder us. As the saying goes, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. We have to keep our mind engaged. 
not just materially but spiritually material engagement is temporary and unsatisfying for the mind just like how the genie kept coming back but when the mind is satisfied with a higher spiritual engagement the mind's restlessness is cured and the mind is happily engaged always so the easiest way to control the mind according to scriptures and as suggested by lord chaitanya is chanting hare krishna the great mantra for deliverance in all humility mantra means one which delivers the mind from all anxieties the genie was never able to fix on one thing until it got its final task of going up and down the ladder this refers to the process of going up and down the japa mala or the chanting beads and the mind is happily engaged shrimad bhagavatam also confirms this process sabai manah krishna padara bindayo one must engage one's mind fully in krishna only then will there remain no other engagements to agitate the mind then one should engage the various senses in serving the mission of lord krishna only by such higher engagement can the senses be controlled in conclusion if we divert our mind to thoughts of material enjoyment then our mind becomes uncontrolled and an enemy and if we concentrate our mind on the lotus feet of krishna then our mind becomes controlled and our friend hare krishna